Tides and rocks of the foggy Cape shore have struck terror in the heart of many a mariner. But there's a soft beauty too in its coves and valleys when the mists sweep in gently from the sea. The Irish settled here on the Cape Shore well back in the last century. They came here to farm and to fish and to carve homes and gardens for themselves on this lonely shore. Life wasn't always easy. There were times when it was hard to make a living from the land and from the sea. True, fish scarcely ever failed at the Cape. Vessels came here from all over to fish. Trouble was, salt fish was usually a pitiful price, and the land itself was not rich. But people clung to their homes and to their way of life, and survived. One way, though, the Cape Shore has always been rich in music, in story, and in song. This has always been important through good times and bad. And it's very much alive today, especially among the older generation who've kept close to their roots. My grandfather came from the county in AO. He settled here in 1842 from the county in AO in Ireland. Jim Murphy. Can you remember him? No, never saw him. My father died, he was 72, he died in 1942. There's really an Irish part in Newfoundland, isn't well, it? Well, uh, there was four of us. There was two brothers besides myself and my stepbrother. The Monday morning, my father would give you the work to do for the day, right from Monday till Saturday. You mightn't like to do it, but you were going to do it. And if you didn't, if you hadn't done when you were eating your supper, he'd want to find out the reason why you didn't do it. So I appreciate him for that. He was pretty strict, but it helped you out, eh? Helped yeah, when I went working for myself, I could do with his work. I appreciate him for that today. You got your pension last year, and you haven't stopped very much at all. Then. No, I'm not going to stop until uh, my legs give out, and then I'll have to stop. Yeah. It's a pretty good place to live here in the Cape Shore, isn't it? It's the best kind of a place to live. There's a lot, like I told you, there's a lot of meals you can put on the table and cast you any money. Yeah. Like growing a vegetable, a bit of fish. And from the sound of it, you got some cattle here too. I have some cattle. Yeah. Always kills one every far. Mm -hmm. I had pigs, I'm after having 23 pigs. And you don't burn much oil either, you cut all your own wood. I cut burns no oil, no one at all. Tell me what it's like now, years ago here. You're not that old yourself, I know, but I suppose you can remember the 30s. Get up at 12 o'clock when the cable will be coming in. The vast majority of people have dowries. Come home at 4 o'clock, you wouldn't have very much to eat. 
Get your handle to a plough and plough till nine o'clock in the night. And if you hadn't the plough, you'd be using the rough. So it was hard to make a living then, wasn't it? Yes, well, that's the only thing the people survived on that time. There was plenty of cattle there, all kinds of cattle, all kinds of sheep. That's... The older generation knows what it is to work hard, but they always had time for songs and stories. And a good hand with both song and story is Mrs. Carrie Brennan, who moved to Ship Cove from Branch a long while ago. I was uh, left home at 18 and came here to teach school. I was four years teaching, and I met up with Ned Brennan, and we got married. But that's for the work. That in, he was a fisherman, he did, he'd fish, and he had to work at the fish, wash it out, out of bait, out of the different way altogether. Get down, your back would be tired in the evening after washing the fish. And uh, then we'd have to make the hay, mow down the hay and make it. And we had cows, uh, cows and calves and chickens and hens. And then I had a garden, a nice garden at the back of the house. I grew pumpkins and tomatoes and corn and savory, a big bed of savory along there now. And uh, you had some rose bushes there in the yes, back. Yes, lots of roses, and they spread so much. I had red ones and white ones on the front. And I used to have a lovely bed of flowers now, but they're, they're going on the fall. But I remember one time, right across from one head to the other, about 17 or 18, big Bjorn bankers, they called them. Well, they were lovely, the big sails up on them, and they sell the capelin to them. <laughs> they wouldn't care about the law or anything like that, but they sold the capelin to get a bit of money. So that was how that used to be. Then the men would fish, and there used to be fellas coming at a trap, now the trap men from across the bay. Some uh, man would come, perhaps with his crew, and he'd fish there the whole summer. And, uh... It was all salt fish then, you, you, so all the women would work at the fish too, I suppose? Oh, yes, indeed they would, so wash out the fish and dry it. We dried fish, you know. Mm -hmm. We uh, dried on flakes. And then in the fall, a uh, boat would come from St. John's and take all the dried fish. I believe they have a lot of good times out in Branches and Brides. Oh, <laughs> indeed they do, One, even better now. Although they used, to, when I was a girl home, and the accordion, there was two women used to play. One woman, Mrs. Rosella O'Rourke, and the other woman, Mrs. Mary Ellen Roach. Oh, could they ever, it'd make the accordion speak. Then there was all these people to dance, good dancers there. I believe you, you're a pretty good hand to sing yourself. Some of the songs now came from, came from Ireland, didn't they? Some of yes, the songs? yes, the most of them came from Ireland. Or they, you learned them from your mother, I suppose? I learned, yes, some from my mother. And uh, then, uh, yes. To be honest, you pick them up, you know, among the crowd, all hands at heaven. Tell me, could you sing one of the songs for me now? What about the one you, you sang in St. John's? Would you like that one? Now? I'd love to hear it. <laughs> yes, that was, everybody seemed to take a liking to that, although I never liked it because <laughs> I couldn't see. But anyhow, if it's any pleasure, I'll certainly sing it for you. Kind Christians, all on you I call, if to pity you feel inclined. Your care be so on a fellow full of woe, who was almost off his mind. Six wives I've wed, and they're all gone dead. My love is labour in vain. I have married, I have buried, till I'm very near wearied, and I'm sick with wives on the brain. 
the fox and the hare, the badger and the bear, and the birds of the greenwood tree, and the pretty little rabbit so engaging in their habits, they all got a mate but me. The first on the page was little Sally Sage. She once was a lady's maid. She ran away on a very dark day with a fellow of the pending trade. The next was a cook, a beauty on a hook, and I'll tell you the reason why. For her leg she had a stump, on her back she had a hump, and she got a little squint in her eye. The fox and the hare, the badger and the bear, and the birds of the greenwood tree, and the pretty little rabbit so engaging in their habits, they all got a mate but me. Another one to charm was a girl on a farm, well versed in the harrow and the plough. She guarded the rigs of a lot of little pigs, and she squeezed new milk from the cow. She was sixteen stone, all muscle and bone. She looked with an awful leer. She would have been mine, but she fell into decline by swallowing a mouse in her beer. The fox and the hare, the badger and the bear, and the birds of the greenwood tree, and the pretty little rabbits so engaging in their habits, they all got a mate but me. The next one came was a right jolly dame with a purse as long as my arm, all full of yellow gold, such a sight to behold to the heart of a miser warm. Her only sin was a love of gin, which brought her hopes to a wreck. She slipped on her heel on a bit of orange peel and fell down and broke her bloody neck. The fox and the hare, the badger and the bear, and the birds of the greenwood tree, and the pretty little rabbit so engaging in their habit, they all got a mate but me. I could add to the score a half a dozen more. The list is a long way round. One went over the sea for a better chap than me, and some of them were hanged or drowned. The last one I had got drunk, went mad. In vain I tried for to stop her. Sad with my dismay to discover her one day, and she slowly boiled to death in the copper. The fox and the hare, the badger and the bear, and the birds of the greenwood tree, and the pretty little rabbit so engaging in their habits, they all got a mate but me. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Some of the Cape Shore tunes came from Ireland, but many were written here. One tune, they say, came from the little people who lived in the hills. Perhaps they still do. Patsy Judge knows all about the fairy tune. You asked me about this old tune, which uh, I think is one of the oldest tunes, I suppose, is, uh, in any part of Newfoundland. I wouldn't say there's any very much older. And uh, uh, how I come to guess it was uh, an old man by the name of Jeremiah Foley in St. Bride's. He was about... Uh, between 16 and 70 when I knew him, I was only a boy, and uh, uh, one day he was, I was playing some old tunes on the whistle for him. I was just learning to play that time, and he said, uh, he said, I'm going to whistle the tune for you now. He said that you won't hear with anybody else. I never did hear anybody else with it since. And he said, I learned that, he said, old Dick English was the first fellow that, that had it. And nobody could find out, known the old people, how he come to get it. But the story he told about it was, as he was to go down, he was a trapper, and he used to go down to a place called Redhead below Branch. And he had a tilt down there. And wherever he'd go, he used to take the fife with him. It was like the one of them fifes I just showed you a while ago. It came out from Ireland. In fact, there was only two came out from Ireland, as I know of, at this part of the country. And uh, they were in the fife and drum band in Ireland. And, and, and uh, that was all Mr. Ned Brynn brought out one, the one I showed you there today. And the other one is the English bottle with him. So uh, when he'd go down the tilt, he had a old log cabin built, you know, and he had a door for a, a stick up for a hinge, you know, the, and when the, 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 the stick was uh, stepped down in a slot here, another on top, you know, and the door faster, and you push it in, and just inside the door, he had two uh, nails drove in the, in the logs, and, 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 the, and the five hung up on it. You see, when he would finished playing the night before he turned into a monkey, he'd hang up to put the five up on this. 
He said this night, just after he turned 18, when he put away the fight and turned in, he was not in the bunk when he thought he heard somebody at the door, and then he heard the door squeaking, and he thought he heard something rattling, and then he said, there's somebody at the fife, whoever it is, that pitch dark, no light. And this, next thing you knew, this, whoever it was that came in, you never saw nobody, played this tune. And when the tune was finished, you heard him putting the fife back on the nails again and closing the door and going out. And uh, it was a strange thing, whether he come, uh, that didn't happen, wherever he got it, nobody else, there's no, no Irish people in this area had it. And I met an old Irish lady who was 65 uh, in Toronto. She was an old risk and she was from Ireland. And she thought she had all them old tunes, you know, that she never heard pretty much. She said she never heard it. And I played it for quite a lot of people that came from Ireland and they never heard a tune. So this is what he, so then he called it the, the Spurs tune, or the fairy tune. That's the name it went by. And uh, what it's for, it must be sung out of a march, apparently, because uh, there was no dance for the tune, but here's the way it went. Music, songs, stories, all a part of life here on the Cape Shore, kept alive by the people who were raised in harder times, when entertainment, like everything else, was homemade. Times change here as everywhere, but so far at least, the old ways, the old songs and stories are not forgotten. And despite what this next song says, neither are the old people themselves. Right now I've seen that song from old and old in the way. I was singing, I'm not much good at the job, though. Now, as I went down the street, how often did I meet a poor old man whose life was all but woe? With ages for me spent in his pocket, not a cent, and for a leaf we know not where to go. So let us cheer them all. For they won't be with us long Don't sneer at them Because they're old and grey For remember though you're young When the day to you may come When you'll be old And only in the way So from now on to this hour Do all is in our power to make the road for old folks light and gay. And if trouble on you they do cast, come let it be your last, to say they're old and only in the way. You see, <laughs> that's a true old song, you know what? Around this coast and here today is just awful. It's a real stormy day, and you'll remember what you met out in St. Brian. But uh, in 1925, there was a big storm. Oh, it was an awful lot of ships in Placentia Bay were lost, men, fishermen and everything. But one boat in particular, John C. Lachlan, we, uh, we saw that. And there's, the only one was accounted for, because the water here in Placentia Bay is very deep. And when ships do, or boats get lost, and you never hear tell them again. But my husband went out 
the next morning after the storm to see what he could, you know, if he could see. And he saw a boat away out, I suppose it'd be 60 miles across the bay to see well, how far she was. And uh, he thought he saw a man hanging from the cross trees. His arm, you know, was tied up to the cross trees and he'd swing him back and forth. The storm was still on. So he came ashore and he got all his friends, you know, around, neighbors to go out to see, could he get any? Could he do anything for him? So he saw this man hanging up still, and they, they were in a motorboat, and he said the only thing to do was to cut the rope because he couldn't get at the man. It was dangerous to stand on the side of the motorboat. So they cut the rope that held him. He dropped down into the motorboat. They brought him ashore. They didn't know who he was, but he was the only one who got him to Central Bay that year, 1925, 27, 1925. They brought the man ashore and put on dry clothes on him and fixed him up and sent word. But there was no place we didn't know who he was, where he belonged to. But he's John Lachlan, that was the name was on the boat. And. Uh, they brought this man in presentation. and they left him in the courthouse to be uh, identified you know, with his people or something. But a few days after, or I don't know, but it was the next day, my husband went up to see if they could get any other sign of record, anything in her that you could find out anything about who he was. Or he was the only one who was picked up anyhow. So they got a clothes bag. Belonged to a little boy, I suppose it would be about 15 or 16 years of age. He brought it ashore. We opened it and looked through it, thinking we might find something where we'd know who, who he was or where he belonged to. We got in the pocket a little mouth organ, in one pocket, and in another one, his identification card. And I read this. Uh, My name is Joshua Barrett. I belong to Woody Island, Placentia Bay. Uh, we knew then Woody Island had just off of here, Placentia Bay. So I said, we have an idea anyhow where the clothes bag came from. So I, when I got a chance, I wrote to the nearest relative of Joshua Barrett, Woody Island, Placentia Bay. And about two weeks after, we got a letter. And it would really make you cry because the woman said, the clothes bag belonged to our dear boy, she said. He went with his uncle. Or, uh, Cape St. Mary's that summer for one little trip and that's all ever we heard him she said. so that's it. we've discovered who he was and the man John Lachlan that they picked up he was the skipper of the craft and a few weeks after they towed her into Placentia and she was repaired I think she was out on the fishing grounds again I don't know but there's none of the Lachlans in her they were all gone three brothers and a little boy.
The Cape Shore, wild and rugged, gentle and soft. A place where people still make a living from the sea and from the land. Where men still pull aboard the big fish off Capes and Marys. Where sheep still graze the commons. Where songs are sung in the houses and fairies make tunes in the hills. Where memories of an earlier time are cherished. Where the young still learn from the old. Where age itself has dignity. where the old and young alike have a special feeling of closeness to the land, their land, the Cape Shore. I wouldn't change it not for the city of New York. No, it's a good life. Not any wrong with Not a thing wrong with it, so not a hatred. No, not a hatred. Not any wrong with it, sir.